Hello again, Adam Bazalgette down here in Southwest Florida. I'm two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner down here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Interesting subject today, the golf swing of Lexi Thompson. Stay tuned. Well, Lexi Thompson, exciting player, interesting player, had a phenomenal, phenomenal junior career. And we'll get into a little bit about what she's done there. But she's an impressive ball hitter, has a few unconventional things though in her swing. So we're gonna have a look at that and then I'm gonna come back at the end and give you some ideas as to ways you can get some of the good things in her swing into your swing, at least to some extent. I think you'll find these interesting. But we'll start with her swing. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to get you more free content. Scratchgolfacademy.com is my website. We have all the content there, plus courses in every aspect of the game. Let's get started. Today's Lexi, she's six feet tall, hits the ball a long way. Now she was a prodigious talent as a junior player. She qualified for the US Open at age 12 and actually won an LPGA Tour event at age 16. She's 21 now, she's born in 1995. And again, just has had a fantastic career. She's won seven times at current count on the LPGA Tour and several more around the world. So let's have a look at it here. One of the first things that struck me was for a driver, and this is a really good camera angle, she has the ball pretty far back. I mean, that is not typical. And I looked at a few different driver swings of hers, and that seems to be about where she plays it. Obviously, it works for her, but let's see maybe why she does that, but that's a little unusual. Other thing that's a little unusual with her, I love the beginning of her backswing, but she really turns a lot. And for, you know, for a, just a medium amount of hip turn, she just gets those shoulders cranked way, way around there. Must be extremely flexible, but there's a huge differential between hips and shoulders. But for most people, that would be very difficult to get the, because you can see these arms have swung way back behind her like that, similar to John Daly. Very difficult for most people to consistently keep their angle and deliver the club back in front of them at impact when they do that, but she obviously can. So here she comes down, and, and another feature you see that's a huge store of power, her hips move so independently of her upper body very much like John Daly again, and it just creates a huge amount of stretch between hips and upper body and a lot of potential power. But she does it to such an extent that, uh, you know, with the hips here and the shoulders still that closed and the club that far around behind her, it takes a heck of an effort now to get the club released and caught up. But believe me, my goodness, with all that torque and with the club as close to her as it is with all this angle here, if you can time it and you can hit it, you're going to hit the ball a long, long way doing that. And of course, she can. But it takes such an amount of, let's say, resistance in the hips from here on out to let that club spring all the way back in front of her. It takes on a little bit of an unconventional look. And I think because the club finally springs so... I'm going to say violently. Again, she's won loads of PGA, LPGA events, so I'm not, I'm not criticizing her. I'm just saying that club really springs. It's almost like it whips past her hands, and I think that's why that ball position works for her because she gets a lot of this look in a shaft leaning backwards pretty soon there versus most great players. And you can see as she comes through that she has to really put the brakes on with her hips. In actual fact, if you look at her hips there, in fact, I'm going to split screen that. This is unusual again, and you look at them a few frames later, they have unturned, if you like. They have actually resisted to the point of flipping back in this direction. But she needs and uses that to spring that club from way behind her back onto the ball. You might see that if you looked at hockey. Here's a hockey player, NHL player, I don't know his name, but watch when he goes through for this slap shot. The, the, the stick is going to accelerate so much, he actually almost has to do the same thing with his hips that she does there. They really decelerate and stall, and the deceleration here allows him to really snap that hockey stick. If you watched him from this angle, it's a slap shot. You watch those hips. They, they really, he almost uses the backward movement of that foot to help stabilize the hips, which allows him to really whip the stick. That's kind of what she's doing there as she goes through. So let's have a look at her, let's say, down the line here. We'll look at this view. Great posture. Great posture there. 
and I think a terrific takeaway. You can't take the club away any better than that. We're not going to talk about it a lot, but let's just say that's a very, very conventional takeaway. And although you can't really see the amount of shoulder turn from here, here's where it really gets longish. And that those arms are way round behind her, and she fires those hips. I mean, her legs are square to that golf ball, and the club is still at horizontal. That is really difficult to do. Uh, but with it comes great potential power. But like she does, you've really be able to get, got to be able to pop it and spring those arms to do that. So great separation between this segment and that segment as she comes down. And of course, again, she's very athletic. She's very talented. She's six feet tall, so that doesn't hurt either. And now she's got to really start to slow the hips down and whip that club. And one of the ways she adds resistance to the hips is by springing up on her toes a little bit, and it really kind of freezes them. There's that slight recoil of the hips, a little bit like the hockey player shifting his foot back. But it does the job. You just got to have a lot of talent, a lot of timing to do that. And it gives her a little bit of an unusual trademark look there as she goes through. And she's always had this as far as I know. I've seen her swing on TV over the years a fair bit. It's hard to believe a 21-year-old's been around on TV that long, but she has. That she sort of springs her arms out away from her a lot. And they really work away from her quite a bit for a great, great golfer like that. There's that settling of the hips and through she goes. But there's some elements there, as you can see, that could help her really smash the ball a long way. Let's see what we can learn from that. Okay, pretty fun stuff there. Really, an, really a great swing to watch. Now, just touching briefly on that backswing, I wouldn't call it a problem, not for her. She's won loads of PG, LPGA Tour events, so I'd hardly call that a problem. But most people would struggle if they got their right arm and shoulder that far behind them. First place, if you're not super, super flexible, and I'm assuming she is, she's obviously, just from looking at it, she is, I don't know her, you're probably not going to tend to do that. And secondly, when I have seen people do that, usually they don't get their wrist cocked very well, could be a grip issue or whatnot. And so subconsciously they kind of make up for that by over swinging their arms and they tip and lose their balance a bit that way. So I'm thinking if your grip is good and you get the club set a little bit and you're not as flexible as she is, you're probably not going to have a big problem with that. So let's look at the power moves that she does so, so well. Now, First thing, and whether or not you're trying to duplicate her swing, if you're going to have power, you have to be able to se separate the segments of your pelvic area and your thoracic area. We've looked at that, how she does that. So drill I would give you, this is a TPI drill, a TPI special, is can you keep your upper body pretty still and rotate your hips freely and independently of your upper body. A lot of people find that very challenging, and in many cases, it's not so much that they lack the mobility, they just don't have the coordination quite built up to do it. I played a lot of soccer in England growing up, and kicking a soccer ball, there's a lot of that in kicking a soccer ball, so I'm kind of used to that, plus, of course, all the years I played golf. So if you can't stand there and rotate your hips almost completely independently from the top of your body and pretty freely. Get in front of a door jam, an open doorway, put your hands on the sides there, which stabilizes your upper body, and practice it there. You can build up that coordination. You need to be able to do that in golf. And even if you can't do it with the separation and flexibility she does, if you can move your hips independently of your top, you'll really help yourself and you'll load that power. And of course, the other thing we noticed was not only did she move the hips independently of the top and let the club load in there, but she was then able to stabilize them and whip the club coming through. And that's, a, that's another thing, even if you can't do it at her level, you need to be able to do to some extent. So I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna suggest you hit a few shots with your right foot drop back, right toe about in line with left heel. But my trunk is square to the line I'm hitting, and just take a short iron, this is actually a six iron, but you can take a seven, eight, nine iron or something, and hit some little shots and whack that club through. And if you keep that right heel on the ground and don't let this thing flip over here, it puts a lot of resistance in your hip. So drop that back and sting a few nice little shots out there like that, and you'll start to get the feeling for resistance here as you go through, and how you can rip a little speed in the golf club. Hope that helps you. I hope you found that interesting with Lexi Thompson's golf swing. Exciting player. Certainly got a few idiosyncrasies in there, but some great stuff too. And if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Would love to get you more free content we plan to have coming. There's a lot of free content already there. And scratchgolfacademy.com is my website. All the free content's there along with 
full courses in every aspect of the game. I hope you'd like those. Thanks again for your attention.